Citizen Sleeper, role-playing in the ruins of interplanetary capitalism from the developer and other waters and featuring the stunning character art of some person. <laughs> Citizen Sleeper is a narrative RPG set in Erland's Eye, a ruined space station that is home to thousands of people trying to survive on the edge of interstellar capitalist society. I mean, that's a mood. We're all trying to survive capitalist society these days. So let's dive into it. All right. Citizen Sleeper. New game. Choose character class. Ooh. Okay. All right. I don't know what this... Okay. We have... Okay, yeah, because you play as, like, a, an android thing. You're not human. Long story short. But, anyways, let's see. What do we got? We have... Machinist. Repairs and modifies automated systems used in industrial resource extraction. Yeah, I can talk. Extraction. Sleepers assigned to machinist work are usually diligent, careful, and structured people. Well, that doesn't really sound like me. I'm gonna... I'm gonna be honest. Perk Efficient Extractor. Chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions. Plus one to engineer, minus one to engage. What about the operator? Operator works with drones and high precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleepers are assigned uh, sleepers assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. Chance to gain cryo on interface actions. Um, so we got plus one to interface, minus one to endure. And then lastly, we have the extractor. Work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleepers assigned to extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient, have a high level of endurance. I mean, like, kind of, I mean, the whole confident part, kind of. I don't know. Chat, Norris, what do, you, what do you think we should be? I have no idea what's good or bad, so... Sunbathe dice action allows energy recovery at home. All right, one, two, or three. Which one looks the coolest? That's kind of where I'm going to go with this. That's that's where my vote's going to be. But he's like, oh, because like the arm was in the jacket and all that. This guy, for being confident and self-sufficient, he really looks like uh, you know he's having a bad day. He, she, they, they're 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 they don't have a uh, uh, gender. So I yeah. They look like they're having a bad day. <laughs> hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, does it help? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like the extractor. I feel like that's kind of like a vibe. Just kind of looks like extractors just like over everything. I, I feel like they're just like had a had a rough day at the office. Like they're coming back. That's like maybe their lunchbox or something. They're like, fucking hey, I just want to drink, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think extractor. Yeah. Unknown. Where are you? First thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect, the delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting. Minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real, to be a person, to be in that body that was indisputably yours. Think of that body. Forget that body. <laughs> Um, do we think of our old body or not? Nah, we, we don't, we don't dwell on the past, chat. Forget that body. You resist nostalgia. It is pointless, especially now. This is the moment to reach out, not curl inwards. This is your moment of escape, even if it feels immediately like you traded one prison for another. Smaller, colder, lifeless. Reach out. You almost laugh, or you would if there was room or even air to do so. The walls of the container are immediately present, cold, hard, at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful, not like you used to know pain at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with a banal quality of a digital notification. 
right now. There are thousands of them. Um, uh, well, we're going to remember the plan. Remember the plan. Remember the others. Remember the plan. I, I think we are a very focused on the task at hand. The past is the past. We move on. You mostly remember that it wasn't a good plan. But then your options were kind of limited. Once you got the itch to get out, by any means possible, it was either that plan or something much worse. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drift away in the chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Slip into cargo processing, seal yourselves into containers, then gen just hope the freighter left before you were missed. Some were lost in the shaft. Others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers, but the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim, heartless rock. Even if in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach your destination. <gasps> um, I'm going to take a nap. Yep, try to rest. But you are restless. It's been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You're dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You've been reserving energy as much as possible. But even when your body has shut many of its systems down to protect you. You may have spent much of that time asleep knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It's time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again, recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. Continue. You feel something. Ooh. Warmth. Not true warmth. But the indication of his presence. All right. So you feel warmth, but you don't feel warmth. It's like, I feel... So this is the this is the LaCroix of warmth. It's like, it's there. Like, you can kind of tell it's there. But, like, it's, it's not really getting to you. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too, everywhere. Screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then light. White as the cold, then softer and softer, until in a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You are out. Hey, we're in the game! I gotta pee, but I don't like that. Exactly. Oh, 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 oh. Spin, 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 spin. Oh, okay. Um. Well. There's a flashy thing here. Let's read it. Dragos, Pragmatic Salvager. Yeah, look at this old fuck. <laughs> now this guy, this guy's seen some shit, all right? He's, yeah, he's seen so He's had, uh, you know, this is like a Willie Nelson mixed with like gotta survive and the zombie apocalypse kind of thing look going on, except in space. <laughs> it's been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of a scrapyard, swaddled. In the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You're slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life. You stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You're surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. Hmm. What voice do we give to? Such an awesome name for like not <laughs> what is arguably a not like I'm thinking Dragos. I'm thinking like Game of Thrones style like you know guys should be coming out. Mm. So sleeper, you thawed yet? Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. Mm, that's a little too young. I feel like that voice is a little too young. Mm. Oh, we'll work on it. We'll workshop it. New frames must have been Perseverance and Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to whole plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech. His headset with its glinting eyes, the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches. Oh, does it have a name? I really hope it has a name. It's irising, uh, locking you with an unflinching stare. 
Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago, and they didn't last long. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he's just figuring out what to do with you. I plan to survive, motherfucker. You aren't sure if he hears you. Well, I mean, he is old as fuck. Let's, let's be honest. I won't ask what led you to do it. Sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now, and you're just software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. You're not along. You remember biometrically signing the forms, the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells, the promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You're no longer that person. You are in an offshoot, a copy. What you won't know is that what is what you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. S and Arp wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well then no one can. You remember that too. Or at least rumors from the other sleepers. Planned at, oh, planned obsolescence. A built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been and how long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you're one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The fuck is the eye? The station. You'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently, impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to get on with. There's an old freight container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. I haven't been much in valuable scrap these days, so you're welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion, fatigue, you shakily get to your feet. All right, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Dragos, Dragos stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusty hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. I feel like since I picked the scavenger, uh, the scavenger guy, I probably got uh, Old Man Withers there, as opposed to uh, other ones. All right, tutorial introduction. Hey, we're finally getting into it. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on the eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. Resting, move for, move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. Select locations by clicking on their icon. Well, there's only one icon. All right. Empty container, your home for now. End cycle. All cycles need to end. Rest and prepare for the next one. You wake, curled up in the corner of the container, and begin slowly assembling the world around you. Like Legos, chat. You just put a, put the world together. Yeah. Container. Four steel walls. Bet. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its messages readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are, on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Hmm. Escape, getting answers, or building a life? I mean, I feel like I, I sacrificed or risked so much to get away. And it could have been some, any amount of time. I feel like the, uh, the escape. Well, now, now, like, building a life. I think, like, I, I have escaped. I feel like, like, we're here. It's like, okay, we got away. Life is shit, but we, we work with what we got. That was the vibe I was getting off the drawing and the front. And I feel like that's the thing. We just go, you know, building a life. You know, working with what we got. Maybe you did get lucky, finding yourself here. Maybe here, on the edge of everything. There's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. Maybe if you can do that, 
you can make life for yourself. Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. The mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. You thumb the powder stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like a damp wood and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images of your restless sleep come back to you. A ring like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright polygonal shapes like angular suns burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you finish drinking that they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. That's a vibe. That's l that's every day. <laughs> Tutorial, condition, action dice, and energy. Condition. Your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle but can also be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals that are keeping you alive. You know, I feel like there's an allegory to something here just in everything that was just said. It's just the vibe. I'm not got to say anything particular they did mention the escaping the capitalist uh, society and all that and you know getting away from the man and everything but you know i i don't want to you know put words in anybody's mouth or you know put ideas in your mind but you know anyways action dice at the start of each cycle you roll your action dice these dice can be used to perform actions on the station the number of dice rolled is based on your current condition the worse your condition, the less dice you have. Once you have used your dice, you cannot take any further actions and must rest to recover them, ending the current cycle. Energy. You also need to eat to survive. This is represented by your energy bar. You can refill your energy bar by eating, but first you'll have to find somewhere to get food and currency to buy it. Your energy depletes by two segments each cycle. If it becomes empty, you'll be starving and your condition will deplete at double rate per cycle. Did, did anybody get any of that? Like, I, 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 it's kind of went in when you have one ear out the other. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Energy, dice, food. Got it. I don't, I don't, am I supposed to? Cryo, cryptocurrency stored in air wall. Leave. Dragos stood in the corridor when you close up the container. He is still wearing his headset. In the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it is implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder. His cache of sensor eyes rapidly uh, irising. How are you feeling? Okay. I don't think my character is one that is going to be like, I'm having a bad day. No, he just accepts the fact that he's having a shitty day. The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice... That beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So, I'm not going to chit-chat too long. You well enough to work? Yeah, I guess. Let's go. All right, then. He nods. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old holes down, sell them off to the shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech... Something with a bit more value, but most what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. And obviously, I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Uh, what the fuck is a chit? These! Pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Airwalled cryo. Isolated from the market. It's what we use to trade out here. Stuffs them back into his pocket. Shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I uh, wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can, and sleepers, well, he trails off. But things being the way that they are for me at the yard, I need the help. You know what? I'm not going to pry. I don't think I'm the type of person that pries into somebody else's, you know, issues and all that. I think, uh, I think we're just more than happy to, chat. Okay. 
pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just uh, come down to the yard when you're feeling a little fresher. There's, there's plenty to do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away. Drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later. Calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. All right. So the same things. Okay, so. Dragos' yard. Decaying scrap yard. Do that. All right. Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. Form an action. Click and drag your chosen action dice to the slot. People action. Hold a section. Okay, so this is just showing. Action rewards you with clock progress, energy, condition, or items, depending on the outcome. There are three types. Positive. Action goes better than expected. Neutral. Action succeeds. Negative. The action fails. Action dice affect these outcomes as follows. 100% chance positive. 50-50. 25. 50-25. Okay, so 6 and 5. Okay. Going to take some time to sort and cut your way through the tower salad, but you're no stranger to hard labor. Okay. So six and five, like you either get positive or at least neutral. Okay. And then three and four, there's 25% chance of negative. Got it. Okay. And the yellow kind of represents that. At least if there's 50 and all that. Got it. Okay. Type either critical or repeatable. Critical actions can only be performed once. Risk either safe, risky, or danger. No loss of a negative outcome means cry or energy loss. Danger negative outcome means condition loss. Neutral outcome mean cryo or energy loss. So the danger ones, you definitely want to try and get the positive uh, your sixes on. The skill that this action requires, either engineer, interface, endure, into it, or engage, modifier, either whatever. This is added to the action dice when slotted and improves its value. Some actions require a plus one to perform. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Safe. So risky. We're good. A debt called in. Dragos is tied up in something ugly. And if he misses payment or two, things could get nasty. Uh, I don't know what that is. Okay. So, I mean, we we have... So this is a, a plus one here. And we could go whatever. Um, let's just do this risky guy. We're going to give him a six. Maybe. Oh, is this just showing me how to do it? Oh, no. There we go. This one, I could go with that. It gives me a 3. 25, 50%, 25. Or I could go like this guy. Give him a 5. Okay, you only do one or the other. So, even the rusty soul can hide valuable components. Extracting them means cutting carefully. You're going to take some time to sort and cut your way through the towers. You know, stranger. Okay. We'll do the whole dissection. Repeatable action. Actions often progress clocks. Clocks are displayed below the action that fill them, and they track their actions, how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad is about to happen. Some clocks, such as the one tracking Dragos' debt, are cycle clocks. These clocks tick themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Any active cycle clocks will be displayed on the icon for that location. Got it. All right. So he's got some debts. Positive outcome. All right. We got a, a bunch of good shit here. All right. Um, I feel like... If anything, we do the, the two on this guy. Because that gives us the best chance of doing something here. Only a 25% chance to... In Sicily, you will unlock drives as you discover more about yourself and the world. Drives guide you on pursuing specific objectives depending on which path you wish to take. You can track drives, and any track drive will place a yellow marker on locations that will help you pursue your goal. Access your drive menu via the arrow button at the bottom of the screen. You're now free to explore Erlen's Eye. Make a life for yourself here. Try tracking a drive to help you survive. Look for food to keep your energy up. Build clocks to progress stories, find new opportunities. Remember to end cycle your home when you are out of dice. Use the mouse wheel, WS, scroll on the station, rotate the view with A and D. Hey, we got a 25% chance positive outcome, and we got it. Okay. Um.
Find a doctor. Repay Dragos. Oh. Um. Okay. Active. Okay, so we did two jobs there. That was that was kind of good. Merge is willing to run the gauntlet here. It's just a rare, but these two always return eventually. Find a doctor. Okay, I think it's this one. Bustling open market. Um, passage into the low end. Extractor view character. Ooh, I have no upgrade points or anything. Old dock terminal. Steel dock plans. Explore the rotunda. Old docks filled with passage and concourse lead to all kinds of docking bays. Interesting. Okay. So this is a definitely like there's a whole bunch of different shit that you could do. Take several seconds to reach the starward belt and return. Load to a scrap from the old Rex. Bright market. Ask for directions. Why wander when there are hundreds of people that live and work within the bright market? All you need is the courage to approach them. Explore the market. The smells, sounds, and buzzing activity of the bright market. Makes it a dizzying place to wander, but an enticing one, too. Okay. And then low end gate passage to low end. Pay low end toll. After some spacious cause some trouble low end yet again, have imposed a toll for entry. No one gets in without paying. Alright. Um How do I know? Shipyard. Okay, so but it you need to find access, so find a doctor. Did it say, like, that it would be... I think they were just, like, flashing if they had a thing. And that has a clock. Back in business. Every so I notice they're always just one lucky hallway. Okay, so if I do more there, but I can... Go here. I can use this six to ask for directions to guarantee 100% positive because it's a dangerous action. So we use our, you know, our six here to ask for directions. You end up at a drink stall debating the finer points of the Solheim collapse. I'm going to move... I think... I think I move maybe the camera down for this. There's a lot of stuff here. I think I'm gonna go down here. I feel like that's a decent thing. And we'll move we'll move back up a little a little later. But it doesn't block majority of the text then for you guys as well. Alright. You end up at a drink stall debating the finer points of the Solheim class. You try to remember all the tips your commandants offer you local knowledge okay so i got that action unavailable okay so i got local knowledge oh i got the uh sabine sabine next comes a call from the enforcer at the door you shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door you keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue trying not to bring attention to yourself you were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place but now you're here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block, have all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few, and without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will. You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue. Try to find something to distract yourself. Um, you know what? I'm gonna stare at the big burly enforcer guy. The Enforcer is looking down the corridor and you dare to glance at him. His purpose is unmistakable. He is there to intimidate, to threaten, and if necessary, carry through those threats. His broad shoulders are framed with metal exoskeleton. A couple of mirror-like implants sit below his eyes like mercury teardrops. Subsidiary sense, input, or aesthetic markers you aren't sure. You also aren't familiar with the geometric, uh, geometric blade-like tattoo on his arm. But you make note of it 
You avert your eyes when he looks back at the queue. After a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway and you catch a distant voice. Hmm. I don't know what the, this uh, doctor looks or anything like yet, so we're just going to go with, send the next one, Tashiro. The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside, passing through a dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in a warm light. A floor-to-ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And for a moment, you're transfixed by the motion. Come, sit, comes a sharp voice. And you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. Sabine, a doctor in the bright market. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak, they blink, and then quickly regain their composure. Please, sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. You sit. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you entered. Fear, recognition, sadness unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on the station? They ask, the scanner still to their eye. I'm just not gonna answer because I don't, I, I think I don't know this person yet. Like a few cycles isn't, is kind of a lie. And I just, uh, I mean, maybe it's not. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait and see. Nah. They lower the scanner and meet your eye. You can talk. They glance towards the doorway. I know the conditions aren't ideal, but I need you to be honest with me. They make some adjustments to the scanner, or you can leave. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. Rude. <laughs> they take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. SNARP doesn't like to see its proprietary technology let loose prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping, they built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one which SNR remains the sole producer of. Sound familiar? Yep, that, that's uh, very familiar. Good, that may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you are unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers, as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status, they focus hard on the inspection of your arm, and SNARP has no reason to release stabilizer into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something, anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help, they sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes, hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You, uh, you saw Toshiro outside, you nod. He works for my, uh, benefactor. Yet again. They're influential in the low end. They give me this space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. But Yet again has connections. Smugglers from the Starward Belt. Mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This is dangerous, and it'll be expensive, but I think we can do it. Why do you want to help me? Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. 
When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face. But the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. All right, so we met the doctor. She uh, she gave us a lead, said that we may not die. That's always nice. Always a crowd pleaser. Uh, wait for Sabine to acquire that. Cool. Build a ship mind. You've heard talk of a fabricator owned by the Ort Exchange. With that and a few fries, you could build a ship mind core. All right. Uh, what's this? Emphis street food vendor. Emphis is a busy. Emphis is busy. His broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. His other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red fleckered dressing. Fleckered. Flecked. Dressing. The smell is incredible. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with a bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, handing over payment. What an approach. You join the queue. It's mostly made of off-duty salvagers, vac, suited, un vac suits unzipped and rolled down to expose stained vests, grubby mods, and a lattice of star tattoos. Scars and tattoos. They discuss the best food on the eye, the best drink, comparing notes on bright market dives. Their words cut through with heavy spacer slang. Eventually, it's your turn, and you shuffle to the front. Emphis speaks in a deep, even tone without looking up. First time is free. Thank you. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers. Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. A hard life, a lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. I'm gonna tell him a story! Yay! Story time, chat! You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye. He nods as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his walk. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility and its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container, and the endless cycles spent within it. Now it seems, you tell him, like some dream that you once had, but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you. You're unsure where to walk, where to look, and what to do. Eventually, you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time, we can talk some more. He smiles, but next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner's side, and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across his forearms, each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pen marks. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. So, pretty much, this guy is a dealer. Is, is what that is. He's a dealer. You know, there's different types of dealers. You give away your product for free to, to reel them in, chat. You get them hooked. You know, you, you give away the, the good shit. The, the good stuff. And you just, hey, you know, you just try it. You come back if you like it. And that's how you get them. That's how you reel them in. All right. Uh, so that's going to take like three day things to do. Leave. Um, that, that, rotunda, old dock. Steel dock plans. I'm gonna, like, finish doing our job and make some money here and try and help out homeboy. What's this? Dock C4, rotunda wet dock. Healing and crossing. Okay, that just has stuff going on. Um, Dragos's yard. Yeah, because we need to... Let me check this out. Endure. Let's do, uh, let's do a five. It's risky. Um... 50% positive, 50% neutral. We only run a, a huge thing if we get negative, so I think a five is fine here. Because I think, well, I mean, either way you get, like this would be a six, right? 
plus one. Hundred percent positive. I don't know. Wait. So they. Hold on. Wait. Is that my? So those are the different things. Okay. Endure. Engineer. So that's. I, I, I'm, I'm not like trying to click the I'm just trying to see, but like my endure is plus one. Why does it say like negative one here? Oh, because like, okay, my endure, my endure. So yeah, so like the, so these I'm getting a plus one because of my, right? Yeah, the endure. I was thinking engineer at first. Okay. So yeah, I do want to do like that one because I get like a plus one either way. It's a safe one, but you know, safe is fine. We like safe. Uh, start the action. Manual salvage. With our five on the die. Plus two back in business. Plus ten cryo. Cool. We, we do that one more and we're we're good. Leave. All right. Time to time to go back to the empty container. Your frames for the skin allows you gather energy from sunlight. The longer you stay, the better. So wait, what what exactly per cycle energy condition? The dice aren't energy though, right? I don't know. We'll find out. This time, you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, the shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. For a moment, you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away and down them. Dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect to, you see the station. No, you feel the station like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. I want to touch it. You find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it. Follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers. Then you try in a moment of impulsiveness to connect to them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to gas grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice a tugging feeling pulling at you insistently as if it were a small child. Somehow, it is pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second, and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored. And then it's gone. Interesting. All right, we got some okay dice rolls. Frame for allows you gather energy through the sunlight, so safe. So, like, what exactly? Hold on. Options. Time since last auto save. Got it. Screen text size. That's that's fine. Music level. That's all fine. I just I I wanted I wanted the help again. I'm not sure which one is the energy. <laughs> it's fine we're gonna go back to all right she's doing that or exchange hardware all right so we got some clocks going around here we're gonna do another salvage job here we're gonna do the five hundred percent positive no reason to hold a section it's heavy going but the hard work helps you forget your worries for long, you've cleared a large portion of the yard. Always just one lucky haul away from their next payday. So wait, do I have to like do anything to like get that one going? Dragos! You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast dark shape suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hole plates and bent structures spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. She's a beauty, ain't she? Drago stands to the side, focused on the hulking ship that's lowered into the yard. 
She is. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Dragos for this monstrous craft. You can't help but think of what became of its crew. What happened? What do you mean? He glances at you. I managed to convince our salvager friends to give it to me on credit. That's what's happened. No, oh, what happened to the ship, my guy? Not my concern. Shrugs. Ship creaks like a calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I know I said you shouldn't stick around, but I'm going to need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the Hulk, their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull. Watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion, locked inside that container. The wreck of the SNR freighter lowered in the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Or was the container delivered to Dragos on its own? A womb for your rebirth into this strange station. You shudder. Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Drago, squeeze your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we're up to it. What do you think? Past cycles. It was one day, my guy. I literally did all the work needed to get done in one day. You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on its side. Winter Light. Let's do it. Claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty. Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting, and then slips out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Hey, we got an upgrade point. Tutorial, Carrie, you've completed your first drive. Each drive completes and unlocks an upgrade point. Spend on upgrading your character. Access your character menu via the arrow button at the top right of the screen. Bet. Upgrade. Alrighty. We can go chance to gain random scrap item on engineer action. Chance to gain the cryo. Energy recovery at home. Predictive reasoning. Dice action. Oh, I can't do that. I, I could go just to zero. Chance to gain energy after any engage action. I don't know, like, even when condition is breaking. I mean, that might be good. The plus two to the that, just straight off the bat. Agent nodes give dull data rewards. Use scrap components. I mean, just going straight up endure. Just building into, you know, I, I ain't gonna go... I ain't going down like that. Fuck it. Hard to kill. Wait. Oh, it takes two upgrade points. I lied. I'm not going hard to kill. I lied, chat. My bad. Chance to gain energy after an engage. Do we get rid of the negative one? Chance to gain cryo on interface. Chance to gain random scrap item. I mean, maybe I just like do the thing that does not get me a negative one. Agent nodes give double data. Use scrap components at home to repair to condition. Chance to gain random scrap item on engineer actions. I'm just gonna not be... No, I want a plus one on something. I want a chance to gain energy after any engage action. That sounds great. Engage. Starship, engage. All right, um, and that being said also, what's this? Assist a shipbuilder, engineer, all materials. As a newcomer, you can only gain favor by grabbing a load of materials and asking where the nearest yard hand, where to take them. Only way to get to know the shipyard is to work there. All right, hold on. So this, Dragos is nervous. Dragos seems increasingly nervous by your presence of the yard. You're not sure he's going to hold his nerve much longer. Investigating the winter light means picking through a system. Structure with care won't pay, but you may find answers. Well, there's our, our minus one there. Ship breaking is tougher than slicing a blue salad. Dragos is happy to pay you a fixed wage if you are up for it. 
danger on that one. This one's a safe boy. Minus one. We kind of need some yard clearance history. No, this ship is salvage. Dragos always says, break it down, move it on. Winterlight, the wrecked cutter. Dragos has brought in salvage history. Discover if you are curious. Hmm. Okay, so we can take a couple different actions. Uh, the thing is, I want to... I'm not sure what this... Uh, let me see what this guy does. We're going to use the three here just to see what I get out of it. Uh, what exactly is energy? Gather energy through sunlight. The longer you stay, the better. What did we get? We got positive. Oh, okay. So we got all the way back up. But it doesn't give me more dice. That would be good to use, like, when you're down to, like, one die or something like that, I guess. Because we were at five before. And I think I'm, like, fa uh, decaying fast because of, you know, we're waiting on this guy. Low end gate. Emphasis stall. Ort exchange. Play the exchange. Low chips and components. All right. We can play the stock market. I think, I think we just start with uh, a little bit of this guy. We got a six. Um, I think we uh, look into our past a little bit here. Ooh, what do we get? Ship mine fragment could be reassembled with the right tools and a few more fragments. Okay. And, uh, that's all we got in terms of stuff. All right, we'll do one more day. We'll see how this goes. In cycle. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparks with glittering lights like stars reflected in a winter lake. It's clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads, you see bright shapes, cache, caches of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms and leaping off into the void. You begin to understand. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops, that it seems almost impossible to parse. But you... <gasps> Ooh, excuse me. But you begin to try. Um, I want to focus on the nodes. Four seal walls. Focus on threads. Focus on nodes. Focus on nodes. The nodes are glassy bright, but in all this flow, the only solid and fixed points. You approach one, a pyramid or a triangle. Dimensions are kind of difficult here. And lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse inside, the glass clouds and hardens, cutting you off. The threads and nodes, passages, and puzzle boxes. One leads to another. There's so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then, that insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down and again see two lines, two threads, pulling in different directions as if they were tied to you. The first or the second? I mean, we gotta go with the first one, right? Like, you just... We don't go to. We're we're not a we're not a going second kind of character. The first thread leads out away from the station into the inky black. Well, <laughs> fuck me. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. The second, the second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something. A sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam. Testing you. Tasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. Someone out there is tracking you. Following your trail won't be long before they arrive. Bet. Alright. Tutorial! The cloud! Something has changed inside. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While there, you can use dice and items to access systems and extract data. But be careful, these networks are old and strange. Click the eye button at the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. Mm -hmm. Ooh! 
Keynode. Data here is part of a cache tucked away during the collapse. Who hid this and for what purpose? Data actions allow you to extract data from the networks of the eye. They work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must match your dice to the one displayed on the right of the action. You have a plus one or plus two modifier on the interface skill. You'll be given more possible dice to match. You can use any dice that matches the dice to play and display. Once unlocked, the data can be extracted. Oh, well, I don't have one of those. All right, don't have a two. I got a couple ones. That I'd love to use. Okay. This guy we could use because I don't want to use ones to do any actual jobs. You know? Kind of kind of shitty rolls today. Input one, Solheim cipher. This gate conceals a network of systems. All right. Keynode. We got a three. As mines cryo at a glacier place abandoned by the hacker, the repurpose. It. Okay, so that's a hacking thing. So we could do that one. Yeah, to gain agents. Some gang enforcer implants are chirping. I'll calm so it's time to see what they're all about. Alright, so we got a couple things we could do with the ones. Um this was the other one that was a one? No. I don't want the cryo hack one, I don't think. Lone connection feeds and isolate. Its last access time stamp is a thousand cycles ago. Uh, you know, I feel like figuring out the history of everything is a good way to go. We're going to finish up today, and then I think this will be a good first session. Oh, wait. So, wait, I have to... I have to do two of them? Wait, I'm confused. Match input. Unlocked. Okay, so this takes two to do it. I needed a dice to do that, and then... Oh, no. It just takes the one. Okay, it's just a... Ne uh, neutral outcome. Plus one encrypted die. Okay, that was kind of interesting. Um, so I need two. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do the... This one, the Yadigan agent guy. Okay, so yeah, you just need the, the one to do it. Okay, bypass. Unlocked. Extract data. What do we got out of this guy? I got some Yadigan data. Yadigan. So we know some more about homeboy. Okay. Data cache scan from Yadigan. Stream password able to unlock the station's aging maglocks. Data. Okay. Ooh. As you drift back from the node, something latches onto you. A thread strung tight around you. It tethers you in place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. Its source, somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. Stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity, unknown, astringent, processing. Oh, I'm just gonna stand still. I ain't afraid. I'm just chilling. Just chilling. Please hold. The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It is blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles reading you uh what are you my guy the shape paces around you on lithe legs though there is no ground here to pace on entity identify origin serial cadence the figure faces you expectantly sleeper s and arp unknown known the figure's strange head rotates brackish signature of and not of attempting interface as the figure speaks more threads begin to spiral from its head that's actually really cool to like woo. thick snaking vine like ribbons that flex and wave they approach with intent stop the figure halts its threads its head twitching 
entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? No. No, I cannot. Unfortunate. All at once, Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste. The one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with a fury. I will find access. I will interface. Uh, sealed dock? An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be deferred from my task. It glows with murderous intent. All right, well, <clears throat> I guess we're fighting. You lash out with all your force. Not a physical stripe, but a focusing, a spike of interference leaping out like the tip of a spear. Hunter stumbles, shifts, separates. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station light, shaking with fear. Hey, he started it. Okay, so we have like that many actions before Hunter shows up. Got it. And we have one more day for the stabilizer. Shipyard. We got this going on. Someone out there is tracking you. That's that. Not worried about that. Um, and Dragos is whatever is paid off. So we're good there. This would be a 25% chance at a negative, which would suck. It's a four, but... I think we, uh, just roll with this. We want to, we want to check out the, uh, learn as much as we can. Come on. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Let's go. You got a scrap item. Shipmine fragment could be reassembled with the right tools and more fragments. Cool. All right. Well, that's all the energy we got, folks. Um, hold on. Can we go, can we go talk to homeboy? Yeah, that, there's nothing there to do. Emphasis spice fungus is one of the few things potent enough to stimulate your limited taste centers. It's incredible stuff. Fungus man. Emphasis doesn't trust people easily, but he notices regular customers in his own quiet way. You know what? I'm, I'm addicted to your fungus already. Let's go ahead and, uh, order some fungus. The fungus among us. Ooh. Okay. So that's another way instead of sacrificing a die to get energy back. Okay. So you don't talk to him or anything. Like, can I like re-roll like before I lose all my fucking energy? Like, I'm literally just stuck on having three die right now. Ooh. Ooh. Such a slow turn. Can I go more? Uh, uh. These look like smiley faces. Using the mouse wheel, it automatically goes back to that. So we can go up and down with the the keys, but if I do mouse wheel, it it rotates back to like default. Hardware exchange. Whenever new hardware buy up, break down, sell off, and you're happy to supply it. Play the exchange. Could be a symbol with the right tools, a few more fragments. Is that a... Is that, I don't think this is a... Yeah, I think I'm supposed to keep that. All right. Well, let's uh, finish off this day, and uh, I think that'll be a good first session. Anything popping up? Anything ha happening? Oh, oh, first we got a couple more sessions being hunted. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wait up. Yes. Bing is coming down the corridor towards you. A wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I got you. Uh, do I know you? Grins. <laughs> you do now. What's a hand on your arm? I've seen you hanging around. Just want to chat. You staying in that thing? Nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get straight in the eye. 
get a start on the eye. Hmm. Um, I, know, I think for for next time we play, I'll have a, a kind of more of an idea. Once I get like now these characters and I've seen them, I can figure out voices. Hmm. Looks down away from the passage. What was it? Uh, hmm. The uh, the eye opens for us all. Nice idea, but well, now nah, because that's gonna trail too much into Dragos. If I do that, I'll figure it out. The eye opens for us all. Nice idea, but well, not always very practical. Glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. Uh, we pass together in the main hallway. Haven Age. Haven Age? Haven Age. We're all one dysfunctional family. Fing puts an arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch, though. Don't worry. I'm with the systems. Haven Age? Think of us as an administrative association for the eye. Depending on who you talk to, we either emerge as a response to or continuation of Andre Erlin's original union. Personally, I avoid the topic. It stops you in the quiet passage. Look. That's not what I'm here to discuss. Been seeing some unusual network activity. Well, I know little about you sleepers. I have a small proposition for you, but well, this is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then when you're settled up, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. All right. Our medical stuff is done. We got a couple die to do some missions. Cool. I think that's as good a time as any to call it for our first session. Last autosave. Seven seconds. I like it. It's funny that we were talking about uh, D and D and that before going into this, because I feel like this is me just living out my own character campaign and just having it be DM'd for me. Except I'm also narrating it as like the DM, but I don't have to come up with all this shit, so it works. 